What's up guys, this is Jules and this is going to be my PVP build for Stamplar in the Homestead patch. This is a five heavy to medium build. It's a very simple setup, but not a very typical one. Most Stamplars I talk to are currently in medium armor, not heavy, mostly due to sustain issues. Stamplars do not have a Magicka to Stamina conversion the same way that DK and Sork do, so it is definitely necessary to build for a little bit of sustain when you build your Stamplar. With that being said, I do still think that heavy armor is the way to go on Stamplar in this patch. With this build, I'm able to get all of the bonuses of heavy, higher resistance, wrath for damage, constitution for sustain, increased healing, and also get enough sustain to be able to manage. So without further ado, I am a Redguard Stamplar, as you can see here. I do think that Redguard is going to be your best bet for a race with this build because of the Adrenaline Rush passive. This is going to be giving me 3% max stam every 5 seconds with melee attacks. This pretty much should proc on cooldown, so it's a very, very powerful passive. I'm also going to be getting 10% max stam and 9% stam recovery. So I do think that the potential for Red Guard definitely surpasses that of Orc, uh, Bosmer, Imperial, any of the other good stam races. I think that Red Guard is going to be a staple of the sustain in this build, so keep that in mind. Another other couple things to note, uh, I am a vampire, so I'm going to be getting a little bit of sustain from this, and I am also getting the undeath passive, which is very good. I am running the Serpent Mundus, which increases my stam recovery. Uh, typically when people go heavy armor builds, they do go thief. I do usually use thief on all my other heavy armor builds, uh, mostly just because you lose the crit of medium when you hop into heavy. Um, but I did end up going with Serpent over Thief because I felt like the sustain was more fluid with Serpent. So ultimately, I made the choice to go with about 40% crit and less uh, issues with sustain as opposed to having about 52% crit and um, having a little bit harsher sustain. So that's just something that you're going to have to choose for yourself um, and your playstyle to see whether uh, Thief fits with you or Serpent is better for you. For me, I ultimately chose Serpent, and I'm happy with that choice, and it doesn't really affect damage, so I'm okay with it. Another thing to note, I do have M bonus here. This is a bug on PC right now. Uh, currently, the alliance I'm on, EP, does not even have Emp, um, so I can't get rid of this buff. There's not really anything I can do other than to basically tell you you're not going to have as much health in your build um, if you run the exact same thing as I have here, unless you have Emp. Uh, but even without Emp, your health still should be around a, a pretty comfortable 25k. So there shouldn't be any issue with that, just kind of giving you a heads up. And then the food that I am running is max health and stam regen. Um, I did try to run max health and max stam. However, the sustain just felt um, not good enough. So I did go with the stam regen. However, we do compensate for the loss of max stam with one of the sets. So we will talk about that in just a little bit. Just looking at the actual stats, max magic is at 9.9. .9. Max health, we're looking at 26.7. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit lower without emp, probably around 25k, like I said. Max stam, 38. Stam recovery, 1624. Weapon damage and weapon crit unbuffed, we're looking at 2627 and 28.9. So just to buff up with just... Major Brutality and Major Savagery. This puts our weapon damage at 3110 and our weapon crit at 38.9. You will need to keep up jabs in order to keep that weapon crit that high. And additionally, the weapon damage does have a potential to go up another 950 weapon damage between the Wrath passives and the sets that we're wearing. Uh, those are going to increase our weapon damage pretty significantly. Um, so I believe that the max weapon damage of this build will cap out around 4,060, which is still very high for the amount of sustain and max stam that we have. So that is pretty much all of the stats, guys. Now we can move on to the gear. So moving on to gear, we are wearing 5 piece of fury. We talked about this in the DK vid as well, but this is giving us health, stamina, weapon damage. And then the five piece, when you take crit damage, your weapon damage is going to be incrementally stacking up to 25 times. Fury has a potential to give a total of 750 weapon damage. It is definitely very, very good um, on a stand build when you are outnumbered. So I'm wearing five piece Fury all on the body. 
and all in pen. The second set that I'm wearing is Hulking Draugr. Uh, as you remember, we did talk about this in the DK vid as well. This is found in Dire Frost Keep, and it is a set that is basically full of all max stam. So these two pieces are both in pen as well. You can run two pieces of well fitted if you have them. Um, however, my in pen, my pieces are all in pen. So we have two Hulking Draugr on the head and shoulders, and three on the jewelry. Everything is enchanted with max dam, and all of our jewelry is enchanted with max weapon damage. What's nice about Hulking Draugr is that it gives you so much max dam that it kind of compensates for the fact that you are not running max dam on your food. So as I said before, we're running max health and stam regen food. So what happens with this setup is that you kind of get the best of both worlds. Hulking Draugr puts you at a really good 38k max stam, and then you get the stam regen from the food. So that's why those things work so well in conjunction together. The final pieces that we're running are Maelstrom Weapons. It's pretty typical. Sharpened Two-Hander, Defending Bow. Doesn't really matter which of the two-handers you use. I do have all three. I've tested all three. I like the Greatsword the best because I feel like it does the most damage. Um, but like I said, you can do pretty much any of the Sharpened Two-Handers here. And then the final piece is just these Double Dot Damage Poisons. I run them on both bars. They will be suppressing a portion of each of the enchants. They will suppress the Endless Hail here and the Crit Rush Dot here. However, you will still keep the weapon damage on both weapons, so that's important to remember. And that's pretty much it for gear, guys. Now I'll move into skills. So as far as skills go, I've been running the same skills on Stamplar for a very long time. Um, there were some changes to Stamplar's skills. We have Crescent Sweep, which is now physical. Binding Javelins a little bit faster. Power of the Light. It's like easier for a solo player to hit the cap. But I ended up sticking with the same skills that I've been running on Stamplar for a very long time. Uh, even though, I mean, I tested these, I just didn't end up liking any of them more than I like what I have already. So, just getting into it. We have Biting Jabs. It's going to give me Major Savagery, or 10% weapon crit chance. It's also going to give me 10% crit damage from Piercing Spear passive. Biting Jabs is nice for the Burning Light procs. It's nice for AoE situations and for blocking targets. Targets that have a lot of health that you need to whittle down. Um, it's kind of more of a supplementary damage to me and a buff than it is actual main damage. Then we have Rally. Major Brutality It's going to be a hot as well as our burst heal. Dizzying Swing, this is our CC and our main damage. Crit Rush, this is going to be our gap closer. Reverse Slice, this is our execute. I did choose Reverse Slice over Executioner because Stampler is pretty intensive with the AoE, with the Dawnbreaker, and with the Biting Jabs. And then the final one we have is Dawnbreaker Smiting from the Fighter's Guild tree. Like I said, I do prefer Dawnbreaker over Crescent Sweep. Crescent Sweep hits very, very hard. Um, the one thing that I don't like about it, though, is that it does not have a CC. And for me, in an outnumbered situation, um, Dawnbreaker is always going to be more clutch coming in with you know, CCing a lot of people in front of you and being able to get some damage on them as they break CC is going to be a little bit better to me than being able to just do a lot of damage to them. So that's why I chose that. Off bar, we have Resolving Vigor from the Alliance War. This is going to be our hot. Just make sure you keep it up. Shuffle, this is Major Evasion and Immunity to Snares and Mobilizations. This is going to be the most expensive skill that we have on our bar, so make sure that you use this for the Unchained proc. Restoring Focus, this is the most tanky skill in the game, I think. We have Major Resolve, Major Ward, Minor Protection, Minor Vitality. It's a very, very good skill. Um, we get our resistances where we want them to be between 20 and 30k on our off bar. So we're very, very tanky on our off bar. And then we're also going to be taking less damage and healing for more. So it's a very, very good skill. Extended Ritual is the next skill. This is going to remove five negative effects from us. Make sure to use this skill pretty wisely. You don't want to be purifying literally everything off of you. Because you're running Fury, any of those dots on you, um, if you have, you know, Velocious Curse on you, anything like that, purify when you feel like you need to. Don't purify absolutely everything. For one, it's going to not allow crit damage to be ticking on you. So you want to make sure that you use this wisely. And then the final skill that we have is Repentance. This is going to be a free skill. Gives us some 
uh, Stam Regen on this bar, which is nice. And this gives us the ability to drain bodies and get some Stam Regen back. The final skill that I'm running is Devouring Swarm. I have it here. It's nice in certain situations, but 9 times out of 10 I'm going to be using a Dawnbreaker. Devouring Swarm is really kind of a last ditch effort. It's going to be basically if you need to be able to get your health back up and you have people basically all over you, it's going to be nice to kind of just use that and maybe you can switch to offense, kill a couple people. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really only in severely outnumbered situations and only in very like niche situations as well. A good supplement for Devouring Swarm, which I might try myself, is going to be Empowering Sweep. This is the opposite morph of Crescent Sweep. It does scale off of magic damage, but we wouldn't be using it for the actual damage. We'd be using it for how tanky this makes you. Um, basically, if you use Empowering Sweep, you are very, very tanky, and it is very, very cheap. So I like to have one, one ultimate that is kind of like a tankier ultimate, and then one that's more of a damage ultimate. So I'm considering putting Empowering Sweep here instead of Devouring Swarm. And that is pretty much it for the skills, guys. If you want to switch anything out, I'd say your three flex spots would be here. I do like running these three skills, but you could put Poison Injection in place of one of these. And if you don't want to run Poison Injection, then you could also run Trap. I like to run all three. I think the tankiness is necessary. I think the ability to remove... Uh, you know, really, really tough stuff for me is is definitely very necessary if I have, like, increased cost poisons on me or anything like that. And then also Repentance, I think, is just constantly necessary for not only the Stam return, but also for the heal. It comes in pretty clutch sometimes. So that's pretty much it for the skills, guys. Now we can move on to CP. So we are running 10 into Bless to increase our healing done by 5%. 50 into Precise Strikes to increase those crits. 40 into Piercing. Remember, I'm running the Greatsword, not the Maul. And 100 into Mighty to increase physical damage by 25%. There are two reasons I'm not putting any damage into Thaumaturge. The first being that I found that it scales very poorly when it comes to increasing damage. You'd almost always be better off putting them in other damage passives. The second being that even if it did scale well, I tend to use jabs just as secondary damage and not as primary damage. So I would have to take points out of these three passives, which would be increasing all of my damage just to put points into this, which would be only increasing jabs. So moving on, we have 53 points into Resistant, 70 into Hardy, 60 into Ellie Defender, 17 into Quick Recovery. I have 100 into Warlord, 33 into Mooncalf, and 67 into Tumbling. 67 into Tumbling gives me 14% reduction in Roll Dodge and Break Free. This might seem like quite a bit of points into Tumbling. However, I find that stacking points into this passive really helps with Sustain on Stampler. It really adheres to my playstyle, and it allows me to move and play more like a medium armor build in Roll Dodge like one, which is a pretty familiar playstyle for me. Um, so that's why I put so many points into that. And that is pretty much the entire build, guys. Um, I hope that it has been helpful to you. I know that a lot of people say that you cannot run heavy armor on a Stamplar, and I hope that this has proved that you can. Um, if you've seen me play this on Twitch, you know that my sustain is very good on this, and, you know, I do roll dodge around. It's not like I'm not using any skills, and damage is very good. Survivability is very good. So if you guys have any questions or if you have any comments, concerns, please feel free to contact me below or anything, you know, on Twitch, Twitter, anything like that. So that's pretty much the build, guys, and I hope you have a great day.